Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggy. This is going to be a match that I actually missed. I had the stream open but did not get to see the specific game, but was told by uh, Minions, special shout out to him, that this was a incredible game. Upper right hand corner, we have Artosa starting as the Teal Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we have, uh, I'm just going to call him the Orange Protoss because that's not much of a name. TTL4798. I guess TTL is something I could go with. I'm not sure who this explicitly is on ladder. I do know that this is in the 21, it's around 2000, it's A rank play. It's actually funny, I was actually talking to Jayun. I got to visit Jayun right before he uh, moved, which he's an awesome guy, but I totally had inflated Artosis's, mostly because I'm not up in that skill length or skill rating and I don't oftentimes look the number and I'm like, yeah, Artosis is hovering around 22, 2400 between there, right? It's actually, currently he's been hovering more between A and like borderline S and occasionally dropping down to B, mostly because of Smurfs. Uh, which I think has been very aggro. It's actually interesting. I feel like to be S rank, you really need to be S rank right now, just because you have so many players that are S rank that or that are also A rank that rebuild the accounts and then have the lower MMR and keep like doing this pull down drag sort of thing in the midst of it. Anyway, none of that is relevant for this exact moment. Artosis, our Terran hero, the skill honor, macro builds. Looks like he's going to go ahead, uh, go ahead and build this barracks interior to his base. This is on Largo. We do see a gateway opener bottom right hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick map reveal just because I like revealing the new maps several times. Natural expansion here. You also have the nearby third, which can be difficult to hold because of these ramps. And I feel like this is where it might be advantageous towards Terran, particularly with those uh, level one weapons uh, rushes or the level two, level one weapons attack here. But one critical thing is, is it feels like you can take three bases pretty easily, or sometimes you can even get up to the high ground and take these four bases easily. But once you're at that stage, the middle ground can be somewhat difficult. Or getting your additional bases after that, breaking out, can be very difficult. So it, I think it can play favorably towards Terran. If Protoss gets a big army advantage and kind of goes that ground stomp play and just has a, enough Arbiters, enough Psy Storm, something along those lines, uh, that can be a big thing. It looks like Artosis is going to get first scout, and it looks like his opponent is going to end up getting last scout, so that bit will be advantageous. We do see Cybernetics Core warping in. also want to say at this level, uh, what I have not seen a lot of yet on stream is a lot of players going for what we saw in, I guess, spoilers, a uh, new style of build in ASL Finals, which I won't say how successful it was or not, or who the winner was or not, but we've seen a movement towards two-gate or I should say two base carrier. And the two base carrier play uh, really has been there, I think mostly to try to negate a lot of the timing pushes, try to get a quick advantage over Terran opponents. So it looks like we see a Dragoon warping and we do see range being upgraded. No Zealot uh, initially, and it looks like our is gonna go ahead and put a, bu a bunker down at his natural expansion so he can go ahead and follow this up by grabbing his command center. He's already got one SCV pulling back to gas after that factory is plopping down. I'm going to try to keep that SCV as long, alive as long as possible to get the additional scouting information. This probe scout actually might get boxed out. Is it going to get the corner? Looks like it's going to, it doesn't know how many Marines are in that bunker. It looks like it's going to attempt to get across and ah, turned around. I think actually it might have been able to sneak out with just a sliver of health. Artosis actually opening up with a vulture and also plopping down that command center. So two Marines in the bunker. This is one of those, and I maybe if he can sneak this vulture out, to the nine o'clock location, he might be able to stop an early third. I think he needs to yeah, move it out to the left though to do so. It looks like he is doing so. I like this play. This is a brilliant play. Sneak it out before the Dragoons get there. He's still gonna need SCVs repairing on the bunker, especially as range is going to finish in not too long here. But what this allows him to do is go ahead, because oftentimes what Protoss will do the, behind this is first of all, they're gonna grab that expansion, but this Vulture can provide scouting information. It can also, uh, it can also deny Protoss that are trying to seal this front door in with the Dragoons and grab a quick third behind it and really slow that down. So I feel like this is very, very intelligent play. Pylon down. The probe still hasn't dropped this Nexus, and this Vulture actually may be able to walk back and pick off a probe. Reinforcements to the Dragoons. Actually, you might even be able to get additional kills. So there's the kill of the probe scout at the natural, which is significant. We do have SCVs on the bunker, but the Vulture has breached the main. There is a Dragoon to deal with that. Looks like the probe's pulling off the line. I don't know that Artosis had the bend with the micro both that and the front and actually needs to get that other SCV on there. Otherwise, that 
front door might have been breached. That command center is up. He's actually following this up with a starport. Siege tank. Siege tech as well. Is he going to go for vulture drops on top of this? I don't I don't think so. We'll see what he's going to do with that. This is a He's going to do something tech-wise with that. We have an observatory robotics facility. I like this play out of Artosis. A little bit different from his usual fare. Poking at these Dragoons on the front. He needs to be careful protecting that siege tank because these four Dragoons can go for an initial pot shot to try to wipe them out. Usually you, you wait for five Dragoons before making that attempt. But doing a little bit of damage here to that Southern Dragoon. And it's actually pulling that off uh, that line. Now that you've got the five Dragoons here, he needs to be very, very careful. You can see as they're, they're motioning forward a little bit. A little bit of repair on the Dragoons and there's all sorts of Dragoons on the front. Siege take finishing just in the nick of time. One of the Dra Dragoons getting splatted. They're still going to go for the attack here. There is an SCV to repair. It's repairing now. And this is... Oh, I was going to say a big misstep. But it looks like it's about equalized. So yeah, he lost that siege tank. But he also took out with the SCVs. Oh, it needs to keep the bunker up. He also took out several Dragoons. Another Dragoon going down. So nothing working out well for our own Orange Protoss on the opposite side of the map. He's finally dropping this Nexus. But Artosis with a significant lead. He's also building a Wraith. Are you kidding me? Is this just a, a Wraith for scouting? This is not your typical fare versus Protoss. So building a Wraith uh, to start, maybe just to continue with that scouting information, but he might even be able to pick off uh, a, a probe or two if he moves it. But I like that oftentimes, yeah. I like this, actually. This is very new. This is very new. So it's going to be fewer siege tanks. But basically what this allows Artosis to see is, is, okay, was a quick third grabbed or not? Without, and he can just kind of sail this around the map and get the scouting information he's looking for. So sees the robotic, uh, the robotic facility, sees the observatory, is going to actually be able to scoot out and see that that Nexus isn't even finished. And now he's going to go ahead and just, yeah, start picking away at individual probes. And that's going to force the Dragoon, well, the Dragoons are just going to stay back, so he's just going to try to let the reinforcements. But as soon as he takes a shot, yeah. He can just go ahead and back off with this. This almost feels like a, a Scourge or a Corsair equivalently. Uh, hasn't peeked at that third base yet to go ahead and see whether that's going up. But I think he's got a pretty solid idea of what's going on around the map. Two additional factories, sorry, three additional factories being plopped down. No armory as of yet. So this is a very new concept, honestly, that I've seen out of him. Kind of a different style of play. Uh, Observer is making its way into Artosis's base. This also might be because... Um, allows it's kind of interesting because that wraith also allows like a skip of academy a bit because you can get that scouting information that way so you don't have you can get the academy later and not worry about comsat as early uh, it does have the disadvantage where if your opponent was going for like a dt rush or something along those lines and also the wraith is nice because if you have your opponent that was going for a potential reaver drop something along those lines this reminds me of a build that mine threw out against bisu honestly as if he's trying to sneak out the Orange Protoss currently, though, uh, kind of dodging a bullet. Because Artosis opened with that Wraith, there might have been an opportunity for Artosis to have just an overwhelming amount of ground forces and push out from there. But because he opened up with that Wraith, he is actually able to play a little bit lighter on the Dragoons, kind of skip uh, production in that regard, not get additional gateways, and kind of equalize the economy a bit by getting his three bases up fairly rapidly and saturating them. He's still behind in Artosis as far as the overall supply count. Mine's being upgraded, by the way. Looks like a, a volley of vultures. A volley of vultures? Is that what their official grouping's called? That is now. A volley of vultures being uh, created. It looks like some vultures able to sneak by this grouping of dragoons, able to get a handful of probe kills and at that third base. Evacuating that now. The dragoons pushing up, and so Artosis continuing to hold the economic lead and getting some good harassment done. So, and that's... Yeah, and that's definitely, so a lot of economy being disrupted. This build has been scouted. It looks like we see additional gateways being plopped down. So at the sixth gateway count, the follow-up, no forge as of yet. We, I was going to see if we saw, it looks like we do see a shuttle in production to potentially do what will be a bit of a later drop. Artosis now grouping up with a lot of siege tanks and vultures, but there are enough dragoons where... Perhaps with this and the ramp advantage, he might be able to, to push this back if Artosis was getting aggressive. An engineering bay being built on the front. The Wraith there to provide... This is almost like a versus Terran thing. Nice scout. Going to be able to pick that observer off. 
And this is also going to put his opponent in the dark. Well, almost putting his opponent in the dark. One last hit. Almost got it. But I like what Artosis is doing. He's going to go ahead and be aggressive. Have the siege tanks on the low ground. Pick this up. And this basically provides him a mineral only to take at leisure. And also that 12 o'clock base. Moving some vultures out to go ahead and plant some mines. Get a little bit of map control around that direction as well. The Protoss on the opposite side still hasn't grabbed a second gas. He's grabbed a Citadel of a Doom, but so it looks like he's mostly wanting to play this Gateway Heavy. He does have a Forge there at the Mineral only, but the Vulture is able to once again slide in, get a lot of additional probe kills. So everything going right right now for Art Artosis in this match. The Vulture is able to connect, get a lot of kills, force a lot of probes out. He's actually even gotten this in, seeing the Citadel of a Doom, saw that shuttle, which looks like it's mostly going to be a defensive shuttle to drop Zealots on top of... Uh, Units that might be incoming. Some nice mines in position already across uh, the midfield. Looks like another observer kind of snuck in. It's just kind of keeping an eye towards that mineral only. And Artosa is going to build a command center, but he's going to build it off site and float it down just in case. Just in case. He's getting flooded by a uh, gateway man. Sitting at four factories, he's grabbing Charm Booster upgrade. Has a ar second army being built. Looks like level... Uh, one weapons is being started. This is critically a pretty late level one weapons. And that's actually going to put him about on par as far as the upgrades go versus his Protoss opponent. But he should be able to pick up an upgrade advantage as he does have that second armory uh, being built. Some pylons being built to the upper right -hand corner at, or of uh, the orange Protoss base. Vultures are scouting out, going ahead, keeping an eye. Just in case uh, additional bases were being snuck. But right now, Artosis up in supply, which is where you want to be as Terran. He's got some decent mine placement out in the field. The Dragoon's starting to press forward to maybe clear some of these mines. Zelt Lake Speed is going to finish momentarily, so maybe he's hoping to dive on top of some of these siege tanks to press against these vultures. It looks like he's going to clear those mines. Now, keep in mind, this third can be a very difficult base to hold, that observer getting picked off, because there's that high ground advantage walking into it. We do have siege tanks on the low ground. It looks like Artosa is still staging up from the low ground. I believe this creates a misfire chance. So sometimes if you're lucky, you can still press into this. TTL just going to go ahead and back off after clearing those mines, getting Artosa a little bit nervous. A couple supply depots being plopped down to create a bit of defense against some zealots that might have been able to stream in. And instead, TTL going to back up, check the 6 o'clock location, perhaps planning on taking that as his fourth base. And going for more of a, a macro play from here. Science facility is up. Looking for some sort of tech switch, potentially. It looks like we are seeing the tech switch here more towards Arbiter. So it's going to be a, a flurry of commsats being dropped. I believe that scouted this. But we see the Templar archives being dropped. This is a... Feels like a late Arbiter switch. Cannons being placed at the main. At the mineral only. But not at the natural expansion. Just in case vultures were able to sneak by again. And TTL... Still slow playing this. He's still a little bit behind where he wants to be in the overall supply count. Level 1 weapons should be there shortly for Artosis. And Artosis has gotten his own dropship with Vultures to go ahead and maybe get some damage done. Fortunately for him, there are two cannons already at the mineral only. There's already the cannon in the main. So I don't think he's going to get a lot out of this. He is going to get confirmation on the Templar archives and kind of a, a good look at the base. But he honestly would have gotten that with the scouting information he was looking for anyway. If maybe if he can re-scoop them up and move to the six o'clock location, he might be able to get something accomplished there. But the Vulture is scooting down, able to pick off one probe. The Dragoons and Zealots already engaging rapidly. The Observer there as well. So I don't know that they're going to get a lot yet. And it looks like they're also boxed in by that SimCity, able to pick off, mm, looks like one probe right there. Trying to get additional probes, but instead attacking the cannon. So a bit of a null attack right there. And honestly, that was a sizable investment that did not pay off so lost four vultures which is a sizable amount of minerals plus he went for this dropship which could have been siege tank something else and didn't really get a lot out of it six o'clock base now being grabbed by that orange protoss another command center floating out to that 12 o'clock location and now we're moving in towards what it feels like that critical macro point on largo my concern so Artosis, I think, is just going to sit back, wait for 200, 200, and whatever the upgrades are there before starting to press out. 
our orange Protoss on the opposite side sitting at an eight gateway count. I'm expecting that to increase, especially if he's going for, still haven't seen an Arbiter Tribunal. There's the Arbiter Tribunal about halfway done. But it, in the mid game, it's gonna be critical for both players to hold kind of the middle ground because it is the ability to hold the middle ground that allows you to get additional expansions from here. So it can be a flurry of, of army exchanges, kind of the artifact of Largo. And I kind of like it for that aspect. Science, science vessel being produced is a uh, okay. And Artosis is hitting 200, 200. Now the question is, is does he get aggressive or does he go for more of the starvation tactic? What I really want to see him to do is yeah, just kind of cut the map, not in half even, like cut it in two thirds from there. A single zealot has managed to snuck out, sneak out, snuck out. It snuck out. It's in the upper left hand corner. Observer, keep an eye on these vultures overhead. Artosis, unseizing these tanks, looking to reposition right as. TTL is regrouping a lot of these units to the north. And this is going to be a critical engagement. Who gets the better of the exchanges? A couple of vultures out of position, getting wiped out. Looks like, unfortunately for TTL, he's trying to group up in what is kind of a funnel. If the siege tanks get there in position, could be a big win for Artosis. And it looks like this army actually trying to evacuate to the south now. An observer getting picked off. Artosis using Comset to try to keep eyes on this army. A little bit of a game of cat and mouse, but Artosis might be walking right into a flank because we have another army moving up. Now sieging up. The Dragoon's engaging. They're just getting splatted. A nice defense matrix to the south. The Zealot's trying to catch that bottom angle, but again, reinforcements coming from the right. So Artosis with his positioning kind of leading him directly into a degree of a flank. The Dragoons look like they are going to get wiped out to the left. They do have weapons one. However, no Arbiter, no spells otherwise. These t siege tanks still getting cleaned up by a lot of these Zealots, but as... As everything clears, it looks like Artosis does have the supply advantage, still has the siege tank standing. He can actually allow Vultures to go ahead and clean up those Dragoons to the right. And if he reinforces rapidly, he might be able to take some ground, but it looks like he's going to back off with what he has. That's unfortunate. Mostly because they want to see him press down and kind of cut off, cut off ground, kind of hold this middle ground as best he can, or I don't know, even seal uh, at this corner, someplace. And instead, it looks like the Orange Protoss is going to be able to go ahead and grab additional territory in the bottom left. Artosis is sneakily building a command center here. Two vultures to deal with that zealot. Otherwise, some additional vulture, vultures starting to sweep out. A whole slew of gateways here in the background. Science vessels being produced. The main is empty, but keep in mind this is three, almost four bases. They're going to be there to supplement it. Vultures there, but no comps that there's the comps that drop to deal with this. There's also cannons to engage this, so I'm not sure these vultures are going to get a lot accomplished, but finding that base there, looks like they're going to try to scoot, maybe engage here to the 6 o'clock. I think he's just presuming that base is up. Instead, he's going to drop some mines uh, before scooting in. He's going to get a single probe kill, but with these three cannons, I don't think he's, and especially with the SimCity otherwise, he's not going to get a lot else out of this. And I think this is at this stage, when you see the Protoss that's invested in those cannons, when you see the Protoss that's invested uh, in the pylon wall and things like that. I almost feel like it's better to just... This is... I don't know. Commentator speak. The guy who's not the uh, the S-class Terran. I feel like it's better just to preserve the vultures uh, and keep them in the back. Drop the mines. I mean, maybe engage. See if you can pick off some units out in the field uh, from there. But anyway. In the meantime, the middle of the map just being left wide open. Artosis does have this base in the upper left. Doesn't have it quite capped in position just yet. At the moment, he's effectively sitting at three saturated bases versus the soon-to-be four saturated, uh, saturated bases for Protoss. But how, however, Orange Protoss grabbing this base in the bottom left. So basically taking the entire bottom section of the map, which eventually will give him an, uh, a supply lead. Artosis, however, hitting 200 supply. Again, because of that late armory, TTL about equal as far as flat upgrades go, though. So the arm... So the... Units might be able to exchange a little bit better than you typically see in a, in a TVP. Siege tanks now starting to press forward and get a little bit of territory. That's a lot of vultures. Looking for the additional siege tanks behind this. More siege tanks. We also see a dropship with two siege tanks. That could get some damage done, particularly if it gets that drop out to this bottom left-hand corner. An observer might see that, though, as it's moving across. Of course, it might also just see a sea of green if it's not just, like, picking out, like, individual units. Mines being cleared out. Towards the bottom left, we do have Arbiters. I think Recall has been upgraded. I, th I think Stasis has already been upgraded. One problem for Artosis, going out and trying to hold 
territory is, is he does have to worry about counter recalls coming across the space. But this drop incoming. And it looks like he's going to skip the main, just or the natural expansion, just going to drop the siege tanks here. A single zealot walking up. That's not going to be sufficient. Is this going to be a defensive recall? No, there's enough zealots that they're just going to scoop up. The Arbiter's trying to... That's the unusual thing. Arbiter trying to attack that dropship. The dropship scooting out, trying to escape. Uh, gets taken out, though. So again, a drop not really paying off. That is going to force this army to play a more defensive stance. And here's... Yeah, this is kind of the quandary for Artosis. Is he has to sit back and defend a lot of territory now. He's got the upper left, the 12 o'clock location. There's a mineral only. His natural expansion, plus all of this juicy tech at his main. And... Arbiters are here with potential recalls that could just jump over that defensive line that he might be able to stand. This is a huge amount of vultures. I actually like having more vultures to potentially be more of a, a speedy response to this. So I almost feel like, yeah, late game, late game Protoss can be challenging to, to cope with just because of the necessity to hold territory at a, a wide spread and the inability for Terran to rapidly reinforce. Some Vulture's trying to sneak through there. That's forcing back. The Observer going ahead and checking out reinforcements. So it looked like initially there's going to be attack, but these Vultures sending these units all the way back to the main. Did I miss a drop here? Or did, did he just kill his own stuff? I think he just killed his own stuff to open up some, uh, some units. Or to open up a uh, better cohesion here. A lot of gateways down while we're looking at this main. Checking out that 3 o'clock location, regrouping. Is he just going to engage heads up? Vultures grouping up right there. The tank sieging in a bunch behind this. Looking for an EMP someplace. Dropping EMP on the Arbiter, but a stasis is able to get on that back line. It looks like a handful of units being grabbed. A second EMP is on that back line Arbiter, but it looks like Artosis just doesn't have enough units. Or sufficient superior upgrades to push through this. He's at 2-2, but we have 2-2 on the opposite corner. So the Dragoons with the Stasis just walking through this. I think Artosis just wasn't sieged in position. He kind of had a staggered line to try to defend. Arbiter taken out from the north. So right now, looks like TTL has managed to maintain a standing army. He suddenly has the supply lead. But is he going to be able to turn around and capitalize on this? Slowly moving from the, from, through this mine line. Mine line? To the north. He might be able to stymie... Some of these expansions to the left, and if he can, yeah, just wipe out, if he can continually do this, wipe out units in the middle and threaten or take out units in the upper left-hand corner, he will end up winning this match. Artosis remining the middle to prevent reinforcements from getting there. A couple Dragoons dying to those mines, some siege tanks in the way as well. So now we have an army that's almost stranded in the upper left. Reinforcements in the bottom right, and the Vulture is kind of clearing the difference. Let's see if they can sweep through and pick off the rest of those Dragoons. I like the movement and actually a decision to be a little bit more vulture heavy on this map to deal with this. However, TTL at near 200 supply, and Artosis a little bit behind in his macro, not quite there yet. But buying himself some time, he does have level 3 weapons, level 3 armor by the way, so fully upgraded army here. Sneaking through, finding a lot of zealots to chew through with these vultures. And with this flood counterattack, threat that's forcing a defensive posture from TTL. So despite having that supply lead, TTL is going to have to play a little bit more defensively because of these vultures constantly pushing through and wiping literally everything out. Natural expansion looking thin. Main has basically been abandoned at this stage. What Level 1 weapons being upgraded. Interestingly enough, we see double Stargate. I'm wondering if we're going to see an attempt at a carrier switch at some point, which I don't know why you would do that on this map. Otherwise, I, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit confused as to why we're seeing the level 1 air weapons upgrade. Because Arbiters aren't exactly like your big beefy, yeah, I'm going to take you out unit. Uh, Arbiter going, no stasis dropped. EMP was hit. Looks like a few Goliaths getting stasis. Artosis with not much of a defense force to engage this. Being caught a little bit out of position is mostly relying on those Vulture runbys. Some siege tanks now grouping up to go ahead and try to defend this mineral only, but... TTL just going to back up, wipe out these units as they unstasis in the middle of the map. And currently, yeah, TTL, so despite having good control over the middle, hasn't been able to capitalize on this and wipe bases out in the upper left while those units have been 
uh, out of position, but it looks like he's now going to march in. This is a, an army he can sack. It'll be a win if he can take out some command centers. Artosis lifting up, going to try to evacuate to the right, it looks like. Some reinforcements sneaking in underneath, catching a lot of zealots. And this tank's up above, delaying a lot of these units. It looks like a nice defense matrix and a bunch of mines here in the way as well. Buying Artosis time to go ahead and get reinforcements and clear this attack up before he loses any critical infrastructure. So a, hand, a siege tank here, a mine there, and a lot of vultures to rapidly reinforce. And it looks like Artosis with a nice defense to wipe this army out. And all of a sudden, he's got the supply lead. A couple of vultures snuck out there. So as things stand, Artosis holds the 12th o'clock location. His, his natural is going to be depleted momentarily. So he's going to be effectively at three mining bases as soon as he resaturates uh, the 1 o'clock. But... His opponent, comparatively, his mineral only and his natural expansion also looking thin. Three clock base has just been established. He's sitting on four bases comparatively that are fully operational. So it's going to be three base versus potentially uh, four base Protoss, technically five base Protoss, although I don't know if he's when he's going to saturate this. And a pretty sizable economy from TTL. Plus TTL sitting, I think, at full upgrades, starting to work on shield upgrades now. And the Arbiter count, pretty decent. The one critical thing I, I've seen missing from TTL is really abusing, again, the size of Largo and a lot of the territory that needs to be covered and just not, I mean, just a handful of Zealots or a handful of Dragoons getting recalled back here and then counterattacks to the upper left. And it's just, I feel like it's an overwhelming amount of territory to try to defend for Artosis. Two Arbiters, mid-map. And this is why I feel like it's actually important for Artosis to, I don't know, force engagements. Um... Maybe that's a miscalculation. He's a much better player than I, so take his word on that. I'm very surprised at the lack of recalls is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and I feel like Artosis, because of the threat of recalls, actually might even want to be forcing engagements to try to force the the stasis out and try to get favorable exchanges uh, with these vultures. Basically, like, poke those units in, make sure they just can't sit in the middle of the map and do whatever they want. Just bully their way around. And don't rely on, because of the, the amount of territory to cover, don't just let your Protoss opponent... Uh, walk through and bully his way around and find those opportunities uh, to attack someplace. Speaking of which, Zealot's now marching in the upper left. Artosis swinging around, trying to enclose this. It looks like there is a stasis, but mostly only catching vultures. The Dragoon's trying to buy some time. It looks like he's going to re-engage while those tanks are unseized. But honestly, with the level 3 weapons upgrade and the positioning and that army split and enough reinforcements to try to defend this in the background, looks like a single siege tank being lost, but Artosis completely defending that, especially with the split army. Natural expansion looks like a... I don't know that there were a lot of SCVs mining there, but that army completely wiped out. And TTL, once again, losing Arbiters, losing that full army, and having to regroup. So Artosis, it looks like what he's happy to do is, is yeah, go ahead and attack these locations. Go ahead and engage them, and I'm just going to sweep in behind you, wipe out everything you're sending, and kind of close the noose and allow you to starve out and kind of win the long game by having, eventually, one more base up and just better exchanges overall. Simply because of positioning. Siege tank still sitting here. It looks like some Goliaths have been grouped up. Science vessel in the midst of him. A much smaller army. Where is the army for TTL? Looks like it's some of it sitting at the natural expansion. Some of it sitting uh, midfield. He's got 76 probes at this stage. Might be a little bit... Might be a little bit overprobed. Overprobed? Is there a word for that? A lot of it might just be built. Double Stargate actually getting armor. So I would have expected to armor before weapons here for the Arbiter upgrade. Maybe it was a misclick? I don't know. Kind of curious about that decision. Vulture's moving in. Going to clear that Zealot at the 9 o'clock location. Artosis effectively has a divided map. And if you can divide a map in half and mine out, in theory, on paper, you end up winning as Terran. I like the mine coverage in the middle. Artos is actually building a couple turrets now in the middle of the map, just really cutting this map in half at this stage. I like that play. I do also like that he's got so much out here. Oh, this is why this is the idea behind the Wraith as well. Yeah, have that Wraith in position to deal with the potential Arbiters sneaking across to go from there. Some Zealots engaging to the right. The Vulture's not in position, so they're going to get on that Siege Tank line. The Goliath's actually being backed up from those... Zelts to the left, so the siege tank's getting wiped out, and the, the dragoons just walking in behind this. So very favorable exchange. It looks like initially 
for TTL. Now that the Zealots have been expended, he can go ahead and clear the rest of this. Just wait for some reinforcements. He needs to be careful. Looks like he's walking into some mines to the left. and Oh, an obliteration of Dragoons. I guess that's what we'll call a group of Dragoons getting wiped out by mines. An obliteration. Single turret being wiped out here. And that really stymied that mine drag. Really stymied it. And I love this. I actually want to pull back and say that I like having that Wraith out there. Yeah, as a follow-up. Still. Still shocked by the lack of... Uh, oof. Shocked by this from TTL just walking into these mines wholesale. Losing a lot of unit. Trying to... Ugh. Trying to micro into them and just getting obliterated. He's at 200 supply again. Moving up to that 9 o'clock location. Might be able to wipe out a handful of Marines. No command center, though, to deny as of yet. This 1 o'clock location is starting to get thin. TTL building, uh, he's at 200-200 again. He's still got four mining, well, it looks like this is starting to look thin. He's still got some mining bases to work with. What's going to be critical for him is to, and actually plopping down a Nexus in the middle of a, a bunch of attack forces. Should cancel that Nexus. Okay, it looks like, I'm not sure if that was a cancel or if that was getting killed. I think it was a cancel. Wiping out that 9 o'clock, and I think... TTL's game plan from here is just deny that 9 o'clock base. Continue to press and keep that siege tank count low. And just play starvation game from there. SCV's coming off the line to try to defend this. A bunch of siege tanks. The, looks like the zealots are actually being distracted by that. But the unseaged tanks are drawing those zealots back. Stasis on the siege tanks that were there grounded. But Artosis... Getting peeled back, but he's drawing this army to reinforcements and the high ground where he looks like we'll get better exchanges. Great stasis on the high ground to neutralize that. And their goons continuing to press forward across that high ground. Now, here's the thing. Okay, yeah, he pushed through this. More siege tanks waiting uh, from the right. Yeah, he pushed through that, but is he going to be able to capitalize on this? TTL. Continue to macro up, and there's the... Yeah, so there's the inevitable tech switch. So now he's going to Carrier. His Artosis is going to sense it, though, and find the time and opportunity to engage and prevent this. So it looks like TTL, again scooping in, is going to drop another Nexus at 9 o'clock. I'm not sure I like this tech switch, though. Granted, there's not a lot of Goliaths down, but this is such a wide open area in the middle of the map that if your carriers get caught anywhere out in the middle, the Goliaths can really just walk up and hunt them down. You don't really have usually like the doodads or the uh, the spacing to kind of walk your carriers away from a lot of fire. Finally, some High Templar are being added in this army. Vultures continuing to scoop down. Artosis landing command center at that mineral only. A very easy takedown of that Arbiter. That army not fully cohesive. It looks like Artosis engaging a little bit to that 9 o'clock was able to wipe out a siege tank. But now we've got, a, yeah, two carriers overhead. I'm not sure if that was revealed. I think it is going to be revealed by these mines now. So despite the, the tech switch, now Artosis is heads up on it. So he knows he needs to produce some Goliaths to follow it up. And I think he got wind of it a little bit earlier even through some commsats. TTL with... In the middle of a transition with a thin attack force trying to grab this 9 o'clock location. But you gotta say, that's that's surprising. Let's see if Artosis can swat that down, moving out with a huge amount of siege tanks and vultures barreling towards that 9 o'clock. Might even be able to get some additional on top of it. Vultures grouping Goliath pressing down. He is on the high ground. And he could press into the bottom left, but honestly, a lot of this is already mined out. I think if he just denies that 9 o'clock base and continues to hold that 9 o'clock base. Yeah, if he can just press in. So creating a wedge right here. So diving down. Carriers are there. High Templar are there as well. I feel like Carriers plus High Templar can be bad news for the Interceptors overhead. But they're just going to eat that Psy Storm, I guess. Arbiter, the Siege Tank still working on that 9 o'clock base. Between the Psy Storm and the Carriers, a lot of units wiped out for Artosis. He's sitting 
50 supply down. Keep in mind, 20 supply of that is in workers. But that 9 o'clock base stands. Artosis, yeah, now grouping up with those Goliaths. And again, this is my concern, is, is when you're out this far with these carriers, as long as you have sufficient Goliaths... Psystorming is... What was that? Psystorming his own carrier to kill it, I guess. Yeah. Too far forward. It's getting picked off as well. Initial Dra Dragoon getting wiped out. An empty Psystorm in the middle of the map. So a lot of Goliaths grouping up. Artosis, right now, he's got the upper left hand mining for him. So he's got three active bases. Versus four active bases, comparatively. And it's going to come down to this 9 o'clock and whether it can be held or not. Psystorm could be the difference here. Psystorming this little gap. High Templar getting picked off underneath. The carry is working on the siege tank close by. And it's now going to be carrier versus Goliath. Without a lot of room for these carriers to maneuver back away. But Zealots... Finally sneaking in underneath. Getting on top of the siege tanks. And the Goliath is just going to go ahead and back off. Some unseaged tanks are going to go ahead and back off as well. Artos is still down. 50 supply. And a turnaround now from TTL. Diving in to this mineral only. Size storming a lot of SCVs. Looks like he didn't get a lot of kills out of it. But did soften several of them up. The Zelt should get the follow-up kill. The Arbiters are on the high ground pecking away. At some siege tanks reinforcing from the right. Artosis lifting off, trying to back off. And the Zealots, High Templar, just going to retreat to the 9 o'clock location. He doesn't need to get greedy and wipe out this base. If he can hold 9, keep it mining, and get better exchanges. Though. I, don't, I don't feel like the exchanges that are happening right now, the carriers for a handful of Goliaths and the, the storms have been on point as of yet. More reinforcing Zealots making their way up. There are a lot of mines between here and there. Goliaths and siege tanks grouping a great size storm. On that bunching. More zealots marching across. Some unseached tanks underneath to help deal with that. Templar getting too far forward, so they're going to get wiped out. And now the carrier is grouping up. A huge volley of Psystorm blanketing everything, but honestly not hitting much. Just because there wasn't a lot left to hit. And now the reinforcing Goliaths marching up, again catching these carriers in mid-open field. And this is where I would have loved to see TTL going for more Arbiter recalls uh, rather than having these carriers. So continuing to push in to the 9 o'clock base. Dropping Siege there. And there's a Goliath grouping to block out reinforcements. There are, looks like, seven carriers to the south. But I don't see reinforcing Zealots to defend this. And if again, if Artosis can wipe this base out and play from there, he'll be in a solid position. Yeah, wiping out all sorts of probes. Looks like he is going to be able to take out that 9 o'clock. And now TTL in a spot of trouble. Artosis, if he can start positioning to the south, has held everything. He's going to be able to starve his opponent out if he can just cap this 9 and start mining here. And honestly, I feel like, yeah, just carriers weren't the answer here. 9 carriers in the bottom left. A bunch of Zelts grouping up as well. Some High Templar underneath. And Artosis with a lot of Siege Tanks and Goliaths to answer that. And they're fully upgraded. Also plopping down some turrets to provide additional defense. Artosis getting towards that 200 supply count. And now these carriers need to get aggressive, but it's like, where can they get aggressive? Might be just an overwhelming amount of them. This is 10 carriers, which is nothing to sniff at. The Zealots diving into the Goliaths as they're engaging the interceptors underneath. Some nice Psy Storm on the siege tanks. Obliterating them to the right. Goliaths also eating some Psy Storms. They're marching forward, but there's still plenty of Goliaths left alive in a lot of territory where they can just march forward. No escape. One carrier down. Artosis lost an immense amount of supply in that exchange, though. Needs to macro like a beast to get it back together. So it's macro versus macro at this stage. TTL looking at an empty bank, however. Bottom left is gone. Six o'clock base is gone. Three o'clock base is one mining base. Not a lot of resources left. He does not hold that nine o'clock. In the meantime, Artosis is still mining 
at all three bases in the upper left. So if he can just hold on, keep the Goliaths alive, and pick off some of these carriers, he will end up winning this match in the long run. Turning into a starvation situation. TTL regrouping in the middle of the map. Eating some more losses to some mind drags. Artos is still not at 200 supply, comparatively. But maybe if these carriers can start harassing, I don't know, to the right, draw the units to def a defensive position there, maybe they can re-establish that 9 o'clock base and get mining again. Maybe if there's a recall, I don't see a recall happening here. <laughs> Just kidding. Artos is well prepared for a potential recall there. A great EMP. I think that EMP dropped, yeah. Catching the shield on a lot of these carriers. The Goliaths, it looks like they're going to go ahead and back off, though. Huge EMP, actually. Some Zealots and High Templar grouping up behind this. And TTL slowly making his way to the right. Second EMP dropping the rest of those carrier shields. But the Goliaths are mostly pinned to the left. Now engaging. High Templar grouping up. Not a lot of Sidestorm, and it looks like they're just dying underneath and not dropping any Sidestorm. Siege Tank's coming from the left. Artosis with the pincer. And the Goliath's just walking up, and there is no escape route for these carriers. Keep in mind, they don't have a lot of shield because of that EMP, so they're going to melt here. Great stasis, though. And that's going to save a lot of carriers, to be honest. Still some carriers getting picked off, as you can see. But this would have been a lot faster, a lot fast, a lot, <laughs> a lot faster... Should, if these Goliaths were in this fight. There's another word I had there, but I lost it. Siege Tank's backing off the natural expansion. Still a lot of carriers overhead. Artosis is still going to need to reinforce. TTL behind this is trying to grab that 9 o'clock location to get mining again. More reinforcing Goliaths coming from the right. Artosis in a pretty good position here, though. As long as he's not losing anything. Even if this 9 o'clock base is taken, honestly, at this stage, I feel like if he keeps mining in this upper left, he'll just have a larger bank to work with overall. And TTL needs to keep this carrier force alive, where I feel like Artosis can expend some units comparatively. TTL regrouping with the Arbiter. It looks like he wants to engage, take out this mineral only. This could be a maneuver that gets him right back in the match. We do have a... Large grouping of Goliaths that have a lot of ground to cover to try to defend this. This might be a forced liftoff situation. Or he might just, yeah, lo just loses the command center at that mineral only. And that is a big strike late in the match where every resource counts. The Goliaths, however, grouping up to trap these carriers underneath. So it might be a Pyrrhic victory. So yeah, you took out that command center, but now you're trapped between a rock and a rocket. The carrier is trying to escape to that 9 o'clock location. The Siege Tank's just walking in, going to go ahead and take out a Nexus right here. And I don't know that these carriers are going to be able to escape. They're getting pinned in. There's a bunch of turrets there to the north. So this 9 o'clock base is going to get wiped out. The carriers are here. If the Goliaths can just continue to scoop up and do some damage there, I don't know that they're going to be able to, to do anything. But Artosis does need to worry about this threat as it's peeling into what's left of a mining base in the, this upper left-hand corner. Single Goliath engaging. Let's see if he can sweep in and kind of close the noose. There are some reinforcements in the middle of the map in the form of Zealots and High Templar to perhaps rescue these carriers. Actually, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and like, okay, I don't care about... Just not even going to bother with these units to the upper left. Yeah, go ahead and stick there, stay there, and I will take the rest of the map. Perhaps a statement here. Some Archons being morphed in. Reinforcements pushing through. The tanks not sieged, some tanks remaining unseaged. The Goliaths now engaging the carriers from behind and reinforcements from the right. A nice pincer attack from TTL. Psystorm dropping everywhere. It looks like it's catching a handful of zealots on top of everything else. But Artosis, actually Psystorm uh, uh, dropping an irradiate looks like on a high Templar. That's a weird effect. And dropping all sorts of Psystorms as he's being backed up into his natural expansion. Artosis needs to hold here. And TTL backing out. Honestly, I honestly feel like he could have maybe pressed 
into this natural expansion just to get the last mining base of Artosis. Artosis, this is his last mining base. TTL needs to distance mine. Oh, and a vulture catching some of these probes. He has a handful of minerals here that he might be able to get at his main, but otherwise, he needs to distance mine at the 9 o'clock location, and he's losing probes to vultures, so his bank is 7 currently. Artosis still has minerals to work with. So TTL needs to do it with what he's got on the ground. And you can just see a flood of probes making their way to that 9 o'clock location. The vulture walking in. So Artosis, not in the best position, but not in the worst. He's still mining at the very least. He still has got a bank to work with. He's behind in supply. But it's who has what left and for how long. I'm not even sure that TTL... Well, I think TTL will want to plop down a Nexus there eventually. But if Artosis can somehow muster an attack force, continue to deny that 9 o'clock, maybe get his mineral only back, he'll be in a good position here. The carrier's continuing to float forward. He's got to get through this wall, though. This air fleet. The wall in the air. Reminds me of a Magic the Gathering card. Not that I ever played that. I just remember that there were flying walls at some point. Carrier's grouping up a couple vultures sneaking across. I think they were hoping to catch additional probes as they were walking up. The carrier's pressing forward. Honestly, this feels like a risky play to me from TTL. I think he was hoping to catch Artosis while he wasn't defending things out of position. Maybe able to wipe things underneath. The vulture is being engaged. A radiate's being dropped on the High Templar. That's actually huge if they can get wiped out. Yeah, wow. Not... And catching some zealots as well. It's unusual to see a Radiate late game. I like that he upgraded to Radiate. It's a big play because that's that spell. Having spells at the end that you can use to take out opponent's units for free. Absolutely huge. Speaking of taking out units for free, these carriers picking off siege tanks. Some Goliaths now moving up. They want to catch these carriers. One science vessel getting picked off. It looks like a uh, second science vessel getting picked off. Over the low ground. Now keep in mind, TTL needs to, loses another carrier, but the Interceptor is to rebuild them. That also costs minerals. Zealots marching on top of the Goliaths underneath. More Goliaths engaging from the right. Some tanks sieging. And TTL, I think, losing control of his army a bit. The Zealots pressing in. This is his army. Artosa suddenly has a supply count, count lead. 100 versus 115 supply. No EMP. Archon's able to get on top of the Goliaths. So distance mining happening here between the 9 o'clock base. Looks like a couple High Templar are just sitting there guarding. And these carriers trying to buy time. I don't see any reinforcements, though, from TTL moving out in the map. More probes moving out. It looks like to do some additional distance mining. Artosis mined out. He needs to distance mine himself. That observer might see it as it's happened. He's going to have to do that in potentially an undefended manner. So Artosis has no bases left. He's got approximately 400 minerals in his bank. A bunch of gas. Can repair what he has. Spending the last bit of it. 113 supply versus 78. But keep in mind, 20 of that supply is in SCVs. So it's a little bit closer than that. SCVs now starting to distance mine at that mineral only. Dragoons are there with the carriers to engage. They're getting wiped out. Siege tanks moving up. Arbiter looks like it's going to get picked off. Psystorm getting dropped on the siege tanks and the Goliaths. And a Radiate looks like on one of those High Templar. It's not long for life, though. A siege tank wiping out otherwise. And the Goliaths with the Compsat able to wipe out an Observer. So now Artosis distance mining and his opponent soon to not be distance mining at the 9 o'clock base. 93 supply versus 77. With about a, approximately a 15, I think that's what, a 12th? 13? Math. Rapid math. Supply count's just about even in army. The Wraith, that somehow got two kills in the midst of all this. Joining the fray. This guy saw the entire war. This is the battle-hardened veteran. The beginning of the game, the later game, looks like he's even going for yet another kill briefly. Gonna do some damage that he can. Hero, I don't know what to call this. The Battle of Largo Ridge, something like that. 
Siege tank being picked off on that corner. More radiates being dropped on those High Templar. The Science Vessel's losing their life for it. The Wraith trying to attack the Interceptors. I think there was an EMP drop there. Hit them. Some additional Dragoons getting wiped out to the right. And TTL losing some unit cohesion. Lost some additional units. However, he's rebuilding a few units here and there. Some High Templars still hanging out. Let's see if they rejoin the fray. Artosis re lifted off a command center, I believe, from location. Yeah, upper left to the mineral only. So he is now mining. And starting to walk up to the 9 o'clock base. If he can walk up and take this 9 o'clock, that will be game. The carriers continue to get picked off, though. The Goliaths continuing to press up into this. And the last two Goliaths going to back out. This is not a lot of anti-air to work with. Three carriers still. 31 kills on that carrier. An additional Psystorm being dropped. This is going to be a close one. Can Artosis muster more Goliaths is the question. Looks like another handful moving out. Some Zealots moving up. It's going to come down to Psystorm, Zealot positioning, and Goliath micro. The Siege Tank's moving up to support the Goliaths. Pressing into that 9 o'clock location. This could be the killing blow. Great Psy Storm on a lot of these units. SCV's getting wiped out. The Goliaths being softened up. The Siege Tank's being wiped out as well. Only two carriers left. The one carrier left as the Goliaths marching into the 9 o'clock location. It looks like Artosis has done it. This 9 o'clock base completely exposed now. That's going to be GG. He can just sit back, kill probes, even if the Interceptors get there. They're just going to get wiped out of the air. He's still mining at the 9 o'clock. Hard fought on both sides. Insane epic match. Unsung heroes of the match. First of all, that Wraith, did it die? It looks like it died at the end, sacrificed its life like a true hero. Second unsung hero, all the mines and turrets there. That Wraith patrolling, and look at all these turrets to avoid... This is why the recall didn't happen. Look at all that. To avoid the recall. Some additional radiates being dropped. So a bit of a skeleton crew left. This is just going to be a handful of Dragoons, two Archons, and that single carrier going to march across the map. But Artosis now mining again. Building that supply back up. Should be able to engage it no problem. So once this army is wiped out, that will be matched. Although his army split a little bit. This is the last hurrah. This is the uh, wounded knee to engage on. Suicide irradiate on a zealot. The Goliaths engaging Archons to that natural expansion. High Templar being picked off. It looks like there are some vultures to engage underneath. The rest of that army regrouping now that this army is pinned in fully dedicated. This poor zealot. Dying to irradiate has to be the most humiliating way to die as a zealot, right? There's like kind of a Klingon warrior ethic where it's got to die in battle. Die on top of a siege tank. Not die sitting there surrounded by a green cloud. Artosis pulls it out. Wins it. After a slugfest. Fun one to cast. Thank you for the replay, Artosis. By the way, check out Artosis on Twitch. If you have not already. He's kind of... I mean, I assume if you're watching this, you watch him. I am hanging out there quite often, and if not, I'm leaving the stream open to give him views. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.